I'm Steve Beal, and this is Ignite TV, and man, I'm excited to share some good news with you, the good news of Jesus Christ, man. He loves you, and today's sermon, I'm going to prove it to you in John chapter 8. We also have a great song uh, coming down the line. It's called Wake, and that's from our Sunday morning service here last Sunday at Lighthouse, the church I pastor in Pennsylvania. And man, we're so glad you're watching and thankful for all of our viewers and our supporters. And we just love Jesus and want to bring you the gospel. Now listen, you're going to see two phone numbers on the screen during this half hour. The first phone number is a toll-free number, 844 it starts with. And that's to call us. I have a prayer team by the phone right now waiting to take your call. We will pray with you. And the second number is going to start with 267 area code. And that is for text messaging. And so you can text me your prayer request anytime. And you can get your phone out right now and send your prayer request in. We write them all down. Our prayer team gets them and intercessory prayer partners and I get them. And we're praying for you throughout the week. Praise the Lord. And we've been getting some great praise reports and you, you feel the prayers and changes are happening. People are being touched by God and, and things in their lives are coming true that we've prayed for. So we know God, He loves you. He's hearing our prayers and He wants to touch you mightily. Hallelujah. Listen, I have some other news to tell you that uh, some of you might not be too happy about, but uh, we're going to be going off of the station that you're watching us on, whether it's WBPH or one of the ABC networks, uh, because we have had an offer to go on national television on Uplift TV. It's a Christian station that's on Direct TV. If you have Direct TV, you'll be happy. It's channel 379 on Direct TV, and then it's going on some cable networks too. You need to check your listings. It's called Uplift TV. We'll be on Thursday nights at 6.30 p.m. And we have to go off our other channels because of finances to be able to afford to go on the national network. But we just prayed about it and know it was an open door from God. They contacted us and we talked to them and, and felt the Lord's will. And we knew we're going to reach uh, seven times more people, uh, 23 million homes, uh, over 60 million people nationwide. And so please... Uh, be praying for us. We want to come back on, especially WBPH. We've been with you for three years at 1130 Sunday mornings and Friday night at 11 p.m. And we want to get right back on there, but we have to do this first and, and see how things go and try to get on in the next couple months. So stick with us. If you have DirecTV, look for us on channel 379, Thursday nights at 630 p.m. So praise the Lord. It's great news to bring the gospel to our entire country. God is so good. He's growing our ministry to be able to do this. Thank you to all of our partners who have made this possible, and we hope you can continue to partner with us. And remember, you can always watch Ignite TV online if you go to ignitetv.org and click on On Demand or the YouTube channel right there. It brings you every video we've ever done, three years of TV shows, and every, every service, Sunday morning and Wednesday night, we're live on YouTube. You can watch us live, the whole service, not just the portion like this TV show offers, but the whole sermon and all of worship. You can watch that online. Go to YouTube and just type in Ignite TV where the first one comes up. You'll see the, the logo like it's on the TV here. It's black and the Ignite TV logo. You can't miss us. Subscribe on YouTube and you can stay with us every week on demand and live. You'll see the sermon before people on TV see it. So hang with us and we will be back. Our prayer is to be back on WBPH as soon as possible. So be praying with us. And if God works a miracle in the next couple of weeks, we'll stay on. Praise the Lord. But we do feel the leading of the Lord to move to the National Television Network. It's an obvious choice from the Holy Spirit. So be praying for us. We love you, and we'll, we'll come back together here soon and stay with us online. Now, hey, let's get to that song called Wake. It is a fun song, praising the name of Jesus Christ. And we just had a great time worshiping him on Sunday. I want to share it with you. Bright, your glory is bright. 
Hey, I hope you like that song, Wake. Man, it's an awesome song, a lot of fun, because we serve an awesome God, and it's about Him in the name of Jesus. Hey, friends, remember there's phone numbers on the screen. Call that toll-free number. I have a prayer team waiting to pray with you right now. Listen, if it goes to voicemail, it's because they're busy. We don't give a busy signal. We go right to voicemail. Call us back. Hallelujah. Leave a message. Text message me. That 267 number is for text messaging your prayer request. We're going to be in John chapter 8, and we're going to be getting the word going right now. Prove that Jesus loves you. John chapter 8, verse 2. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone And the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Isn't Jesus good? Man, I love you, Jesus. Bless this word. I I just need it to come out just right, you know. Love and tears and goodness and boldness. So let's do it. In Jesus' name. I'm the glove and you're the hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, you know, imagine if you're that woman, you know. Imagine if you were that woman who just got caught in adultery. I mean, they caught her. And they brought her to Jesus in front of everybody. Now listen, folks. They didn't bring her to Jesus so she'd get better, did they? They didn't bring her to Jesus so he could heal her, did they? In fact, this wasn't about the woman at all, was it? They brought her to Jesus to get Jesus in trouble because they knew those hard-hearted Pharisees and scribes. They knew Jesus loves people. You see, 1 John 4, 8 says God is love, and Jesus is God. So Jesus is love, isn't he? And they, they were just counting on him being the same yesterday, today, and forever, weren't they? But not in a good way. I count on him to be the same in a good way. Amen? But they were counting on him being the same so they could trap him. They didn't care about this woman. They cared about the letter of the law. They cared about what it said on paper from Moses. And they tried to trap him. And don't you just love how Jesus, he just bends down. He's just down here writing in the ground while they're talking. They're talking to the top of his head. You know, I'll blind you if I do that. But uh, he probably had a full head of hair, you know. But, but they were talking to the top of his head. You know, you have to think sometimes. If you think God's not listening to you, maybe he's writing in the dirt while you go on and on about how much you're not happy with what he's done. Huh? You ever think, you know? We got to come to him boldly, but, man, we got to come as his children, you know. You got to come to God like a child. You know that? I mean, if you, if you give a child a blue bike for Christmas, they're probably not going to, a five-year-old, you know, they're probably not going to complain that it wasn't yellow. Do you know what I'm saying? They're probably going to be out riding it before you can get the bow off, ring in the bell, right? Like, like we've got to start being a little more like kids. We complain about stuff that's not complainable. We complain to God about stuff. We, in fact, we try to trap him in our own devices to, to try to hook him in to heal us or something. Listen, he loves you. He wants to heal you. He wants to touch your marriage. He wants to touch your life. He's in your life. And if you're, are you born again? He lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit's in there. My body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen? How about yours? So he's with you. We don't have to trap him. We don't have to try to find a way to finagle our way into getting God to do something for us. We just need to ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. 
Knock and the door shall be opened. It doesn't say complain and you'll get it. It doesn't say throw stones at a woman. You know, can you imagine? I don't know if they had stones in their hands when they showed up. They probably might have had stones in their hands. They were ready to give this woman the rock. But you know, they brought her to the rock. Hallelujah. You see, the rock makes you drop your stones. I dropped my rock for the rock. I'm tired of Christians stoning each other. Listen, we all have a history of it. We all have a history of complaining. We all have a history of talking bad, you know. We can talk about each other, but we don't know what each other's walking through, do we? I don't know the circumstances of this woman. Uh, Absolutely, adultery is a sin. Absolutely, it's something Jesus doesn't condone. But you know, not one stone flew that day through the air. You see, Jesus is the rock that some are crushed by, but others fall upon him. And receive mercy. Didn't Peter say that? Huh? And you see, instead of getting crushed by the rock, he placed her on himself. Now listen, I want to tell you something. This woman did not come to Jesus to repent, did she? Did she come to Jesus to repent? Was she like the woman with the issue of blood reaching out for the hem of his garment? Huh? Was she like the centurion asking for God to, to save his uh, child from the, his daughter was dead? And he said, Talitha Kum, get up, little girl, get up. No, she did not come to Jesus. She was forcefully brought to Jesus. Isn't that something? It wasn't her will. It wasn't her desire. You see, people say, man, if God's forgiving, but Jesus even said, go and sin no more. Didn't he? Listen, I want to address that today with wisdom from the Holy Spirit. See, you can get a lot of men up on a stage, put them in a suit and give them a mic, but I want to hear from God today. And you see, Jesus said, go and sin no more to a woman who was not repentant. See, we like to point that finger and say that verse to each other, go and sin no more, Nikki. How many of you have sinned no more this year, huh? You've all sinned this year, haven't you? So have I. So if Jesus said, go and sin no more, it's not a verse you can use against her. Because you see, it's impossible for you to go and sin no more, isn't it? Nothing's impossible with God. You can. In Christ, you could live a a total sinless life. But you see, my sins have been cut clean on me. See, Colossians says, I've been circumcised in the spirit. My sinful nature has been cut off of me. In the spirit, man, I am pure before God. Hallelujah. 1 John 3 says, I have no sin. Praise the Lord. Someone ought to shout for me. I really can't shout yet. Hallelujah. But man, I don't have any sin. I can't sin before God. I'm pure. Because I got the, the blood of Jesus is greater than my sins. Now, if your sins are greater than his blood, I feel sorry for you. Now, does, Paul said, should we go on sinning? God forbid. Does that mean I go out and sin all I want? Am I giving everybody the finger out there and road raging and saying the F word and cursing everybody else? No, I'm not. I wouldn't be your pastor if I was, would I? But you see, I'm still not perfect. How about you? Todd, you perfect? Todd's perfect. We'll go ask Debbie. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't mean to point you out, but I always pick on the front row. Look out. Anybody's fair game. Hallelujah. Hey, the Holy Spirit picked you out because he knows you love him. Hallelujah. You could handle that. You realize that's an encouragement. But listen to me, friends. You say, go and sin no more. Why did Jesus say, go sin no more to this woman? Because she did not come to repent. She was forcefully brought. She was a sermon illustration. Isn't that a shame? Isn't it a shame that religion whittles people down to just a number? Hmm? You go, you you don't think it's true? I go with me to the next pastor's conference and see if anybody asks me how many I'm running. Most of them are sitting. I'm not really running any. You know, because we just sit. We're sitting here. We're not running. We're sitting. How many of us are running? You know, they want to know how many people are coming to church. They want to know how good we're doing. They want to know if I've surpassed them. In the glory of ministry. There's no glory in ministry, folks. You want to be in the ministry? There's no glory in ministry. You know, people, you think people fall at your feet? Listen, if two fall at your feet, 15 want to throw stones at the pastor. The glory is in the Holy Ghost. The glory is in Jesus' name. He gets all the glory. Hallelujah. He gets all the praise. Listen, that's why I turn the lights off and raise the screen and look at that cross. Because the glory goes to Jesus. If you want glory in your life, you need Jesus in your life. 
You need a revelation of Jesus. And you say, I've had a revelation. 53 years ago, I had a revelation of Jesus. We need a fresh one. His mercies are new every morning. They're new every day, man. He gets a hold of your life, and he's there all the time. He's in my eyes all the time. He's with me all the time. So, you know, we could tell each other, go and sin no more and never live up to it. And then there's all this guilt and condemnation. I'm not saying go out and sin. I'm saying go out with the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. You know, I want to praise them in this world. But it brings me back to the point that a lot of Christians are carrying rocks in their hands. Line it up. Who's the next one to get my stone? Listen, you throw one rock out, it's coming back at you. You're going to reap what you sow. You want to be short-tempered? You want to be short with people? You want to be a gossip? You want to be a hater? Hate's coming back. People are going to be short with you. People are going to hate people. You throw one rock, they might have some friends. They might throw three back at you. Huh? Is that right? I'm tired of Christians judging each other. Jesus wouldn't let them do it. He just wrote in the dirt while they're talking like that. You want to talk your nonsense, I'll just write in the dirt while you're talking. I don't know what he wrote, but I'll tell you, he wrote the truth. The truth is in the dirt. That's the title of this sermon. The truth is in the dirt. We can talk all kinds of poo we want about each other. We can talk and gossip. We can complain. We can do all kinds of stuff. We can take the Bible and use it against each other all we want. But if we're going to do that as a church and as a people, Jesus will just be writing in the dirt. And not one of them got to read what he wrote, did they? You know, there's only one person who had an opportunity to read what Jesus wrote in the dirt. Who was it? The adulterous woman. They all left, didn't they? They all dropped their rocks and left. If they had rocks in their hands. Praise the name of Jesus. It's about time we learn from this story something good. You see... Although the story ends, do you think the story has a happy ending? It seems to have a happy ending, right? I've always preached it's a happy ending because the people came to, came to their senses, right? The oldest first, isn't that right? How about the oldest? Let's get a woohoo from the oldest in here. <laughs> My mom's going nuts. Buzzy, I don't hear anything. Buzzy, I don't hear anything. I want to hear a woohoo. Marion, oh, she'll woohoo back there, right? The oldest left first. They had the wisdom to leave first and then to the least, to the youngest, until he's alone with her. You know, if they did have rocks, Jesus, it says Jesus was down doing this. He could hear them falling, couldn't he? Plop, 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 plop. And he, he waited, and then he looks up. He stands up, and he goes, where's your accusers at? You know? Well, Deuteronomy chapter 19 in Deuteronomy chapter 17, both say this. 17, verse 6 says, you do not kill someone unless you have two or three witnesses, not by one. And 19 says, you cannot accuse someone of sin unless you have two or three witnesses, not one. She had not one witness against her. Do you see? Do you, see, Jesus is so wise, he outsmarted them at their own game. Because instead of just, he had such grace, didn't he? And mercy, right? But he still carried out the law. They could not judge him. Because the law said you had to have two or three witnesses. And when he looked up, there were none. He never said they shouldn't stone her, did he? Did he say don't stone her? No, he said he's without sin throw the first stone. And he left it up to them to decide, didn't he? He's so smart. He's so much smarter than us. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. And so, woman, where are your accusers? I don't have any. Well, I don't accuse you either. Isn't that something? Now, under law, one man can't accuse her. Do you realize that? Now, I'm going to show you the very next story that makes no sense unless you understand this. You see, why would the very next story be in the Gospel of John? Why would the very next story? I'm going to show you why. If you look on in John chapter 8, this is amazing. Wake up, okay, because you're going to like this. The Pharisees later on, and they tell you he was in the treasury when this happens at the end, verse 20, at the end of this story. It looks like it's just the same story. But listen, it says in verse 13, the Pharisees therefore said to him, you bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Because they say it's written 
in your law that the testimony of two men is true, verse 17. They're asking, how can you bear witness that you are God, that you are who you said you are, the Messiah? You need two witnesses, right? And Jesus says, verse 18, I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. And so he says, I have two witnesses. Are you with me? Jesus has two witnesses no matter what he wants to do. You know that? Him and his father. So according to the law, you needed two witnesses to kill this woman. Oh, we're on another story, but John's trying to show you something. You see, you, when Jesus stands up and there's no accusers for her, right? She had to have two witnesses to accuse her. Is that right? When Jesus stands up, you would say, and I would say, there was only one man to accuse her. He couldn't stone her because there's just one of them, right? He needed someone else to stick around. But the very next story in the Gospel of John proves Jesus is worth two. Which proves he had every right to pick up a stone and kill that woman under the law of Moses. Because God the Father knew she committed adultery. And Jesus knew she committed adultery. And the two bear witness, according to Deuteronomy 19 and 17, that he could stone her. So he did not stone her because of the law. He held back because of his love. It proves the love of God. It proves that God is love. It proves that God loves people. It proves that he loves us so much that he does not want to throw one rock at us. In fact, he put the rock on the cross. He nailed the rock to the cross and scorned its shame for the glory that was to come. Hey, friends watching at home, it is true. Jesus loves you. He is the rock, and God nailed the rock to the cross so you can stand on the rock. Praise the name of Jesus. He brought me out of the miry clay and set my feet on the rock to stay. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to pray for you, those at home, and these who have called in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for healing and your anointing to go forth by the power of the Holy Spirit. Touch all those who are calling in all these requests, O God. We pray for healing and financial need and those in relationship that they are covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the power of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, God bless you. Stay in touch. We'll be on a couple more weeks, and we're moving to the Uplift TV network nationwide on DirecTV 379. Keep on in touch online. Hey, listen, write down our prayer number. Call us anytime. Text me for prayer. Let's stay together. God bless you. Goodbye. Galatians 4, 7. Therefore... You are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. God could have made us slave, but he chose not to. Hallelujah. He chose not to make you his slave. We need help from our faithful viewers that believe in what we are doing in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. America is in a great time of need. Let's join together to bring the answer to our family, friends, and neighbors. Your partnership of $20 a month is not only going to bless our country with the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you will also be partnering with the blessing God has given to Steve Beal and Ignite TV. To become a 50-50 partner with Ignite TV, you can contact us by mail, by phone at our toll-free number 844-447-4700 or go online at www.ignitetv.org and click on the 50-50 partner tab and follow the instructions for a recurring donation. Thank you for your support.